the Saraband from the fourth suite. This Saraband is unique in that only a few of its bars have a second heavy beat. Uh, these bars are bar 2, 14, 19, and 28. Uh, the rest of the bars have a first heavy beat or a third heavy beat or both. Um, here Bach uses also suspensions. Um, if we compare this fourth suite Sarban to the third suite Sarban, uh, where, uh, where the suspensions fall on the second beat, uh, uh, resolve on the third beat. Here the suspensions happen on the first beat, so... Uh, And that's the resolution on the second beat. And this happens again and again in this Sarband. Uh, so, suspension, resolution. Uh, suspension is sort of a, um, a projectura. There's a suspension, what's going to happen? And uh, resolution on the second beat. This uh, very beginning is also interesting. Uh, we are starting on a tonic, but the tonic here acts as a dominant seven to A flat major, which is the fourth uh, degree in the E flat major scale. So uh, that's A flat major. So. Uh, Bar three, uh, we are in the dominant of the home key, which is E flat major. So here, let's play the second half of the movement, looking at the bass line in red here. Uh, the bottom only uh, in this uh, in the chords in bar 14 uh, and bring the top only and then combine so uh, ideally you would hear both lines uh, this counterpoint clearly. And again in bar 17, which is one of my favorite bars uh, in this uh, Sarband, here we have contrary motion for the bottom voice and the upper voice. The bottom voice goes down, obviously. And the upper voice goes up. And, uh, very much like a keyboard player um, would play uh, an interval and th that grows. Here we have to make it clear as well. Uh, notice the hemiola in uh, bar 18. <laughs> So if we play only the uh, line in green, and uh, we add the top, the last eight bars of the star band are very interesting and unique. Let's compare to the last few bars of the first half, starting uh, bars nine. Um. And now we go to the end of the
the Sarban. He could have just transposed it a fifth down and we would have... <laughs> Position, um, but he didn't. He took a detour. So this is deceptive cadence. <laughs> attention to that first motif and see if we can find a different color for each time uh, it shows in different keys. So here are different than second half and then uh, bar 17 um, then again in bar 21. Mm. Uh, it's more open, majestic maybe. We have to also find which uh, notes have uh, structural importance and which ones um, act as a connective tissue. And um, for example, bar two, we have B flat, A flat G. So, so um, this. This is a sort of an upbeat. Also in bar eight, we have this little uh, upbeat sound uh, here. And that's uh, leading us to the next bar. Um, in the second half, bar 13, 14, 14. So, so those. Uh, uh, upbeat and move forward and should not be too heavy. I pay attention also to the little tail um, of cadences, so very end of this Saraband. Uh, so Bach could have finished. Uh, but he added the tail. Uh, about slurs, uh, obviously the first bar doesn't have any. Um, I do play uh, it in one bow because I want to sustain the E flat as most of us probably do. Um, it's an example uh, of notation by Bach that is not super clear, but um, I think uh, my guess and instinct is to play the E flat throughout and not just let it ring. <laughs> which is also possible, but... Uh, in terms of ornaments, I like to add uh, some in the second uh, repeat, especially of the second half. Um, so here on the second beat... Uh, in bar 15 uh, and then here or, or uh, you can uh, find your own obviously I think this is one of the more expressive parts and uh, it it calls for ornamentation uh, this is bar 17 in terms of division into um, bars, I feel that the first and second bars are a, a, a unit of two, then the third and fourth are again a unit of two. So you 
see how the tension grows towards the uh, end of bar seven. Um, and here we have a beginning again in bar nine. So this is uh, statement repetition. So bar 11 introduces new material uh, which we haven't seen before. Uh, we don't have the dotted rhythm here, but we have this figure. I wonder if this is also a hemiola. Uh, maybe you can write in the comments and tell me if you feel this is a hemiola in bar 11. Um, also, regarding this kind of little suffix, uh, the trill in Anna Magdalena's uh, handwriting shows a little thing, a magic, uh, and uh, you can choose to uh, skip it, I think, for the first repeat. Um, and maybe it's a kind of a connecting uh, suffix to the next. Um, this is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.